Hello, my name is Taylor Haynes, and I'm a master's student in the Environmental Sciences Policy Program at John Hopkins University. We are in the age of extinction. This is the sixth mass extinction era in Earth's geological timeline, which is largely impacted by human activities. However, there is hope. Captive breeding programs are an insurance policy against extinction, as they maintain genetic diversity, manage the demographic distribution, and ensure the long-term sustainability of captive populations. However, for one of these programs to be successful, they must fulfill two criteria, as they must produce genetically healthy and adaptable individuals, and they also must have habitat for reintroduction purposes. The blue-headed macaw is a large neotropical pair that is primarily found in Peru and in some regions of Brazil. It is listed as vulnerable according to the IUCN Red List, and it is on Appendix 1 on CITES, on CITES, which is the Convention on the International Trade of Endangered Species of Wild Fauna and Flora. Its threats include habitat loss and fragmentation, which is caused by climate change and deforestation, and it is also threatened by poaching for the pet trade. The aim of this project was to create a framework for genomic analyses for species just like the blue-headed macaw, and to create a collaborative breeding program amongst agriculturalists so that they didn't have to import any individuals from the wild to create a sustainable population. To this end, we sampled 36 individuals from across two aviaries and inferred pedigree information from genomic data, which is as you see before you. We also calculated genome-wide heterozygosity across both aviaries, and you can, as you can see, there is little to no difference. In addition, we calculated the inbreeding coefficients of both aviaries. As aviary B has almost no inbreeding and aviary A has some inbreeding, one must also keep in mind that the, these levels of inbreeding are drastically lower than most populations that are managed within the United States. We concluded with running a population management analysis, which gave us the growth parameter, which shows us that our, this population is increasing, but then also showed us what potential genetic diversity could be retained if we use um, recommended breeding pairs that were generated from this program. Now, this project tells us that we can create sustainable and genetically healthy populations from agriculture stock through the collaboration of both private and zoological institutions, and that we can replicate this study in similar species. However, going back to the beginning of this presentation, a key note about the success of captive breeding programs is being able to reintroduce individuals into the wild. And if there is no habitat, there is no successful captive breeding program. So therefore, we must all combat the threats to these species, which of course, include poaching and deforestation, but also climate change, which affects all of us across the world, no matter where we are. Thank you, and keep flying.